Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we spent a day at the Half-Light Mask using our Perdurance Invitation, of which we have uh, two remaining. I thought I had more than that. Uh, and did a bunch of stuff with the Rat Brigade. Wilma was here. They had uh, one of the final parts of the number to get the treasure that they're searching for. And we did a thing with the Incognito Princess. Nothing big, but getting to know them at least a little bit more. Oh, we also won an election in which, like, probably five people voted. So now we're a PM, and we can go take up our position at the floating parliament. So, <laughs> that's a thing. And our aunt is here. But I dealt with that last episode, not going to take them. Um, I want to go take my position at the floating parliament, but before that, let's spend another day here. Because before, I was on equal footing with the debutantes and... The, um, the debutantes and the servants, and that led to me not being able to, like, speak with the servants to help them with anything. I had to have uh, more favor with the servants, not equal favor with the servants than somebody else. So I want to do another day just to help the servants out and hopefully see what I can do for them. Because I have a big soft spot for the servants. They're they're the ones getting the short end of the stick here. Hand in our invitation. This is probably all going to be the same. That's all the same. Yeah, so German servants, the chaperones, or the debutantes. Now, I don't actually want to try to win favor with both the servants and the debutantes, because, again, I don't want them to be equal. I want the servants to like me more. It's going to be a bit difficult, though, because that requires heart, and I only have 30% chance at that. Rushing here and there, they're a blur of efficiency and sobriety amidst Perdurance's opulence. You try to catch the eye of one of the oldest servants, but they avoid you determinedly, even resentfully. Move onwards. I think all these descriptions are going to be the same. So, I think I have three chances at this. I think I just need to get one favor with the servant. So, I'll try again. Oh, I should have read that. Oh, dang, I can't scroll up to see it. Move onwards. Charm the servants again. They are soberly clad, half-masked in bone-white pewter, and standing to attention at the edges of the ballroom. Yes, thank God. Wax dripping. Under each branch of every candelabra is a filigreed silver dish, perfectly positioned to catch the wax that drips from the tapered candles. A servant darts into the throng to replace an overfull dish, but trips over the whirling skirt of an enthusiastic debutante. You catch him and set him on his feet. He gives you a fleeting smile before retreating once more into studied obscurity. Oh, I gained two servants' favor just from that. Okay, good. Move onwards, and then we're out of this place. Um, I think it's going to reduce our terror as well. We have 10%, all of which we got from our aunt being here. Oh, that only happens once we leave, I think. But uh, this is what I wanted to do. A servant tugs at your sleeve. You've endeared yourself to those who work below stairs. There goes my terror. The servants discreetly share their admiration for your kindness and charm. You try not to let it go too much to your head. There's very little competition in the field of kindness to servants here. You leave richer in gossip and soothed, soothed by the distractions of the half-light mask. Oh, I was hoping there'd be a quest or something. Okay, well, I'm glad I could help him out. Um, I wonder if we... Maybe if we gain super big favor with them, it'll open up like a quest or something. It's possible. I feel like there's got to be some advantage to getting... I don't know what the max is. Maybe six favor with the servants? There has to be some advantage to getting six compared to two, right? Anyway, I just have one invitation left. I don't think I should use it right now. I do need to make the decision of what I want to buy here. Do I want to buy all these immaculate souls? They're a bargain, and they're worth a lot. If I buy them at a bargain price of 215 each, then... Well, I don't know how much they're going to go for in London, but I'm sure more. And even more if I turn them in as a prospect. I don't have a prospect for them, but I should buy them all, right? Right? 
uh, what does the filling parliament sell? This port sells supplies. Wait, you gotta be kidding me. They don't have fuel? This place doesn't have fuel either. Wait. It doesn't say that they have fuel or supplies, which is weird, because don't... Don't they have... Oh, wait, they really don't have anything. Shit. I'm worried about going to the floating parliament before heading back to London, because none of these places have fuel, and I only have 2 and 60% fuel. Uh... Yeah, I gotta go straight back to London. Okay, that's fine. We'll get to explore a bit of the new stuff here. And I'm going to buy every one of these things. That's very expensive. <laughs> oh boy. That just scares me because I'm worried they're gonna, I don't know, go up in flames or somebody's gonna release all the souls. So yeah, just back to London. So with new stuff we find, we have tons of supplies, so I can set out my cabbie all I want. Oh, hello, Dreadnought. Does somebody just shoot at the Dreadnought? Okay, that works in my favor. Uh, you know what? Three enemies, too much for me considering I'm very low on fuel. I'm out. Treasure back behind Berdurance, I'm good. that again? A platform. Do platforms do anything again? I don't remember. Like the Isambard line, was that a platform? I can't remember. Oh, Jesus Christ. HML looks on Tempest. So oh, we got a lot of enemies here. Holy shit. There's a grave over here. Apparently. Oh, a thing to assay. Cool. You know, I don't know if I even want to go there. Maybe I should just go straight back to London. I'm very low on fuel. Yeah, I'm just going to go straight back to London. London sprawls across the heavens, its tea shops and factories. It's gardens and orphanages, it's ministries and gin houses. I haven't seen the back of London yet. Judging by the front, it looks like it's like a spiral of buildings all around. Well, I'm not sure what, actually. Because Dominic Station, St. Dominic Station is not in the center. That's the center. What's in the center? My god, leave me alone. Or a logical office. Oh, there's another dreadnought. Not surprisingly, there's a lot of London's um, ship force next to London. Ooh. Oh, that's the Clockwork Sun, right? I think so. It makes sense that that'd be in the center. It's a perfect sphere. Of course, it'd be next to London. Yeah, that's gotta be. Wait, the Throne of Hours. Well, this could still be the sun. Throne of Hours might be at the sun. Oh, it's probably a dreadnought down there. Yes, it is. Dreadnought action accidentally blows up the throne of hours trying to get me. <laughs> I 
I love this song. I always want to hum it every time. First thing I want to check is how... Clay Conductor. Uh, I'll go back to that in a second. Uh, first thing I want to check is how much can I sell this for? The super expensive souls that I just got. That's not it. There we go. 250 each. Okay, so it's a very modest profit if you're not using them for a prospect. I do want to keep some. Maybe I should keep all of them. I could always sell them in the future. And if I get a prospect to deliver five of them or something, that would be amazing. Speaking of which, there's probably some more prospects. Literature for the Avatar Horizon. Well, I know where to get that. I have two spots open. Let's take that. Gemstones for the mausoleum. The mausoleum, that's the... North-Northwest, yeah, that's the most serene mausoleum. It's super close. I think I only have one cask of... Devaratine gemstones, though. But nonetheless, I'll take it. New prospects available in four days. Cool. Is it about to refresh? Oh, just put all my extra stuff in the bank. Um, yeah, I am going to hold on to these Immaculate Souls for now. Can always sell them in the future. Also got to keep in mind that I am working towards buying that ship. This one, the Aggravain class of Juggernaut, which is going to cost me 6000 I definitely don't have enough to get it, plus have a good amount left over yet, but... You know, once I have a good amount of stuff saved up in the bank... We can sell a bunch of bronze wood and whatnot, then I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna buy that thing. But I don't think I'm there yet. So, what's going on with the Clay Conductor? Recruit the Clay Conductor. You're not a... are you a quartermaster? I mean, you're a conductor, is that a position specifically? No one actually called a conductor. A hulking clay man in a heavy coat stands on the platform. Uh, oh, they're a first officer. Increase your hearts by six and your iron by two. A hulking clay man in a heavy coat stands on the platform. The clay men were an underclass in old London. Very few of them came to the skies. This one holds an urn to his chest. You're a captain. You can perform funeral rites, he says, nodding to the urn in his arms. Then I want to travel. He pauses for a long moment, and then, as if feeling something more might be expected, I could help out on your engine. Yeah, come aboard. Claymen are fascinating. I don't... I don't remember much about them, but I just remember I was fascinated by them in Sunless Seas. Say a few words about death in the sky. Skyfers are accustomed to impromptu funerals. You ask the conductor where he would like to hold the ceremony. He looks about confused, as though he hadn't expected the question. At last, he comes to a conclusion. Here will do, he says, indicating the crowded thoroughfare. Strange. You and a few of the more respectable of your crew gather for a brief funeral. Everyone has at least something in black. You offer the expected phrasings before pausing for the eulogy. The clay conductor shakes his head. You do it, he grunts. Oh, come on, you... Insist the clay conductor speak. You don't even know who's in the urn. There's a long silence. Your crew look at their feet, acutely aware of the awkwardness. The silence continues. Finally, the clay conductor speaks. He was a clay man. He traveled on the Figaro. A pause. He was a good singer. The clay conductor looks at you. Where's your engine? I'm ready to assume my duties. I wonder how they knew each other. I'm fascinated to learn more about them. Let's go speak with them right now. Also, let's look at the stats again. Like, who do I want most? Just stat-wise. Hearts and mirrors. Iron and veils. 
hearts and iron. So... Yeah, this will give me a lot of hearts. A little bit of iron. This gives me mirrors. I... Hmm. If I get rid of the Incognito Princess, that means I couldn't use the cavi anymore, because I'm, like, just on the threshold being able to use the cavi. I need 50 mirrors. Let's stick with the Incognito Princess. The clay conductor has taken a berth in the back of your locomotive. He has made no attempt to personalize his cabin. All of his things, including the urn with his friend's dust, are stuffed into a suitcase that sits forlornly on the floor. He performs his duties with plotting diligence. He keeps up the maintenance of the engine, ensures things run as you would wish them to, and ostensibly, ostensibly looks after the crew. He does not socialize, and when not working, keeps to his bunk. Restore the clay conductor's voice with some chorister nectar. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, let's do that right now. I'm sure I have some in my bank, right? Yeah. You've overheard him attempting to sing, but he gave up quickly. His voice was gravelly and out of practice. Some nectar might help lubricate the vocal cords. A friend in need. The clay conductor fetches a spoon and several lumps of sugar. He mashes the lumps into the honey, then gargles the concoction. When he is done, you wrangle a little of his past from him. The clay conductor was in the clay choirs. His dead companion was a very talented clay chorister. I have hopes of finding someone with as good a voice again. One cannot be a chorus alone. I've heard tell of a clay man in the most serene mausoleum. The clay conductor tails off clearly desiring your assistance, but unsure how to formulate the question. He stares at his feet instead. We can go there, no problem. Wasn't there something else we had talked with him about? Just spend time? Yeah. Perhaps he would appreciate a visit from his captain. No one else talks to him. Happy Traveler. Yes. He doesn't look up from a large volume of sheet music. Slow hymns, like the drift of continents, made from the melody of plate-shifting earthquakes. You attempt to engage him in conversation. He responds to this with reluctance. He is content for the moment. His days have been tolerable. No, he does not need anything. When you eventually give up and make to go, he seems relieved. Wait, so... They don't sing, like... Th the sort of music we're familiar with. They sing music very specific to their people. Slow hymns like the drift of continents made from the melody of plate-shifting earthquakes. Interesting. So they're made of clay or stone or what have you. You know, they're made of elements of the earth, which, I mean, I guess everybody kind of is, but I don't know, this seems like a more direct way. And their music is made from the melody of plate tectonics and the things that make rock and stone and make them move and everything. It, it's interesting. Ah, look at this. If we go to explore London, this is where we use the Immaculate Souls to look for the Baroness of Hell with a repentant devil. I was thinking that nothing about this showed up when I was in London, but I guess I forgot about this. So, let's grab one of these. Look for the Baroness of Hell. The repentant devil does not know her current address, but he's certain it will be someplace formerly grand. What used to be the Brass Embassy. You try the remains of the palace. You try a few townhouses that have fallen on hard times. Then the repentant devil cackles to himself and says, I know where she'll be. Hard to believe I did not think of it first. He leads you unerringly through the streets. It seems he lived here for a time, not long ago. This was once the embassy of the devils in London. It is now a ruin, though still overly hot. You can see only a few limbs of the Baroness at a time. Most of her extends up the grand staircase and out of sight. The downstairs portions are plated, iridescent on black. Something like a widow's ball gown if it were made entirely of beetle. The Baroness's children, question mark, are sightless larvae, chewing old paperwork. What the fuck? Well, I don't like this. Observe the meeting. Someone sent an assassin after me. 
The repentant devil addresses the Baroness's downstairs eyes and her downstairs mouth. The plates of the Baroness's exoskeleton spasm. The rhythm is the rhythm of laughter, but the sound is the rustling of leaves. When she speaks, it is with the same desiccated quality. If I had the energy to kill you, I would have done it long ago. No, my old friend. Your problems come from very much another direction. They visited me, looking for you. She turns her notice to you. It must be irritating, serving such a master. He becomes intolerable when he is bored. Hmm. Correct her about who's master. It's your locomotive. He's on your crew. Oh, do you think so? The Baroness's mouth parts move as though chewing something in the air. I'll leave that between you, shall I? Ask about the person who came for him. What was their intent? I said that there was no point in trying to take him anywhere he doesn't want to go, the Baroness remarks, extending one limb towards the repentant devil. But she seemed likely to keep trying, so I killed her and kept her effects. She produces a bundle of things, clothes, a mean little dagger, and some paperwork. The bundle has been chewed on by the Baroness's children, but the paperwork still looks legible. With that, you are ready to leave. What will you speak of as you depart the embassy? Dwell on his revolutionary tendencies. Wait, he had revolutionary tendencies? I, was that said anywhere here? I didn't get that through the dialogue. Or dwell on his ambitions. Of course he could never have been happy to live with the Baroness forever. Hmm. Well, I mean, this being Elizabeth, a revolutionary, they would definitely dwell on his revolutionary tendencies. Once he was an ardent Republican. Weird to hear the words revolutionary and Republican together. He speaks of his last fight with the Baroness. She did not wish him to leave or to join the Republican faction. The fight was lengthy and violent. He still has scars. Why do you think he has had to grow his sideburns out? Oh. 2,000 experience. The repentant devil has become more angry at the judgments. Let's go speak with him now. Talk about the Baroness. Surely he has more to say. A former roommate. I used to live with her, he says, for centuries before the Republic. She gave me a safe haven. I gave her the wreck of power. I had been something, and now I was not. You've seen how she is. She'll sit in the ruins of the Brass Embassy for a century if nothing dislodges her, feeding her babies on the pulp of diplomatic dispatches. On the topic of those babies, you rather thought you saw her eat one of her larvae as you were leaving. The uselessness and hiding war on me. Overthrowing the aristocracy was something to do. I can definitely get behind this repentant devil. Overthrowing the aristocracy was something to do. Hell yeah. Also, this is a disgusting and really good sentence. Feeding her babies on the pulp of diplomatic dispatches. Duh. Wait, so what do we do next? For them, like... We didn't get a quest or anything like that, right? Oh, we still need to visit the Well of the Wolf with a Repentant Devil. Okay. I still have no idea where that is. I'm assuming Albion, I hope, but I'm not sure. We'll see. We have port reports to turn in. also want to repair my locomotive. 21 sovereigns. How many port reports did I have? Just two? Okay. I think that means we're going to have enough favor now to... try to win the bookkeeper's trust. Oh, I can also get an invitation to Perdurance. I'm good on those, though. Yeah, it costs four gratitude to try to win the bookkeeper's trust. What is this mysterious further work he once alluded to? Have you been useful enough yet that he trusts you? Moving up the chain. 
He considers you for a minute, tapping his pen on the desk. Then he nods. He communicates that he works for the New Street Line, an organization that arranges for work world escapees to be smuggled to safety. If necessary, the line finds them new lives and new names. The authorities do not approve. If you want to help, you'll need to meet his patron. He gives you a yellowing train ticket and shows you an address. It belongs to a fierce philanthropist, co-owner of the Steam and Sapphire Company. Oh hell yeah, this sounds great. So the New Street Line arranges for Workworld escapees to be smuggled to safety. Workworld escapees, so yeah, it is some indentured servitude fucking... I... Is it a port? I mean, Workworld sounds like it's an entire dimension. Christ. Let's request a meeting with a fierce philanthropist. The bookkeeper will arrange an appointment for you. You call at the fierce philanthropist's tall, stately house. Her secretary is a slight man with a drooping lip. He jumps up when you present your ticket and ushers you into his employer's study. She sits tall in her chair, a sherry bottle to one side, her papers to the other. She pours you a glass. Please, have a seat. Her voice has a hint of Midland's melancholy. Inquire into their work or offer to assist. Well, we should first ask what their work is exactly. How does it work? Do they have hidden stations? Black wreathed locomotives? Safe houses for work world escapees? There is no line. The philanthropist taps a nail on her mahogany desk. Only the idea of one. We have conductors operating throughout the Empire, reporting to me. I'll point you to one of them and they'll tell you where you need to go. Assuming, of course, you're ready to be responsible for another's freedom. Absolutely. Offer to assist. A new contact. The fierce philanthropist gives you a nod. We don't handle that side of the business here, of course, she says. Too dangerous for our other affairs. Speak to our man at the yards. She directs you to a firebrand conductor. Use the passphrase, bread for blood. You are now a confidant of the New Street Line. Yes, I'm so excited. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, I, sh mm, I should have pressed depart, not just back up. Uh, visit the Firebrand Conductor. He meets you in a smoky station pub. The Conductor is an itchy-fingered, studious young man, blazing with revolutionary zeal inside his oversized scarf. We'll free them one by one if we have to. It's a good job the clientele is ruckus and utterly uninterested in your conversation. Inquire about the work, what happens on the work worlds, how does the new street line work against it? It's the first time I'm going to learn more about the work worlds. Bread without circuses. Everyone deserves the right to their own hours, to live them at the pace God intended. But on the work worlds, a pauper spends a month of their life to ensure an hour of rich man's luxury. The firebrand conductor spits onto the floor. Those who escape from the work worlds are hunted. My... Our patron arranges passage for as many as she can. We look for opportunities. Empty cargo trains. Drunken captains who won't notice a few extra hands on board their trains. Wait, I don't quite understand this first part. Everyone deserves the right to their own hours, to live them at the pace God intended. But on the work worlds, a pauper spends a month of their life to ensure an hour of rich man's luxury. I've seen so many barrels of unseasoned hours and, and hour looms and stuff like that that when they say, like, everyone has a right to their own hours, I, I start thinking, are we talking about, like, mind hours? You know, you hours as, like, a thing? Or, like, normal hours? Like, are they just talking about indentured servitude? Or maybe just servitude? Maybe it's just slavery? I don't even know if they're all paying off a debt or what. So I'm not sure if they're talking about just having people toil away to make profit for their their masters or if they mean some sort of literal taking people's hours to like make rich people live longer or something i'm not quite sure i don't get it um that's a great to smuggle a passenger there's space in your train for some unfortunate soul the firebrand conductor flips through his notebook the lady makes the arrangements through her network uh, let's see. Uh, yes. Pick up from here. Deliver there. 
Get back to me, and I'm sure I'll have another who needs your help. His mouth tightens. There's always more. You need to collect a passenger from Whirlbury Juxtamare. I, hmm, I think somebody told me how to pronounce that in the comments, but I forgot. Juxtamare? Uh, hmm. And deliver them to Lustrum. Okay, pretty far away. I don't even know where Whirlberry is. Is it even in Albion? Ah, now that I'm in favor with the new street line, I can uh, continue the Fatalistic Signalman's quest with the Charlotte Guest, their old, their old ship. One that's just stuck here in a shed or something like that. Yeah, so if we wanted to, we could put them on display in a museum. I could just go get some bronze wood. I think I have a bunch. But... Even better would be to purchase them, the remains, and give them to the New Street Line. Now that I know what the New Street Line is and what they do, that would be, I mean, I can't think of anything more honorable than having your old ship be used for parts that are going to help people escape from imprisonment, basically. Oh, fuck me, that takes 2,000 sovereigns. Oh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. It's gonna leave me with 1800 though, like, that's plenty to work with. I'm, hmm. I definitely want to do this. The question is, do I do it now or save it for later? Hmm. Let's do it now. She'll never fly again, but her bones and her sinews could be put to good use. The new street line has engines to maintain. Some inquiries reveal that the Charlotte Guest is technically owned by a firm of lawyers who claimed her among the assets of a bankrupt client. Being lawyers, they do not part with her cheaply. The signalman, though, is pleased. Ten years she ferried us around the reach, lugging hours in wood and machinery. She wore a working engine. It's right she should find work now, too. Even secret work. He rests his hand on her plating. Godspeed, Charlotte. The walk back to your locomotive is quiet. The signalman, lost in thought, vanishes into his quarters. Oh, and that gave me ten of the new street line's gratitude. Signalman got to see his old friend one last time. That's so bittersweet. Let's go speak with him. Oh, is this... Uh, yeah, I need to use some Savage Secrets. Trade Savage Secrets over a slice of Battenberg cake to pry some more information out of him. The signalman has sunk back into his reticence. This time, you'll need even bleaker tales to coax him out. Something properly grisly. The Promise of Days. He laps up your stories like a cat would cream. In return, he shares a story of his own came to the skies as a lad in the first days. Her Majesty needed a whole country built and granted us thirty years to do it. I took the offer, helped lay the foundations of London, built some of the dome over the throne of ours. Then I joined up with the squire to, to lay the Isabard line and headed to the Reach. Last time I saw Albion, it were just construction. I'd like to take a look around, see what our graft bought. Accumulate five Albion port reports and speak to him again. Okay, so just like a tour of the Reach, it's like a tour of Albion. Right, well, I think the next thing I want to do is head up to the Most Serene Mausoleum and then the Avid Horizon. Or I guess more specifically the the uh, Home Bureau. I don't actually want to go to the Horizon itself. It's horrible, quite literally. <laughs> then again, there's a horror right next to the Serene Mausoleum too. God, Albion's just full of terrible stuff. Uh, but yeah, I want to go to the Most Serene Mausoleum because the clay conductor wants to go there. Plus there's probably some other stuff we could do. Avid Horizon. Um, I want to finish up that quest where I can let somebody through the Home Bureau out into Albion properly. The Courtier, I believe it was. And also, I have a couple prospects. Need to deliver three literature for the Avid Horizon. And five, yeah, five gemstones for the mausoleum. I don't actually have all the gemstones. But I do have one, so <laughs> that's something. I'm assuming these are worth quite a bit. I mean, it is a cask of gemstones. Anyway, I'm going to get to all that in the next episode, so I hope you've enjoyed. 
and I'll be back soon.